It's Monday, April 4th, 2016, and this is the Drive Check Podcast. So I, you guys know I had a really bad weekend um, this past I, weekend. You, no, I don't. Okay. You never explained it. So um, on Thursday, March 31st, uh, the entire internet, like Georgetown, where I work, got cut off completely from the internet. Uh, basically, our we have a firewall at the border between the university and the internet, and it just would not allow any traffic one way or the other. Um, so that was several hours on Thursday morning. Then... Uh, it happened again Thursday night. So on Saturday, I had been planning to do a bunch of stuff, uh, errands and stuff around the house. And I got a call and I had to spend the entire day at our law school um, testing while they put in some fixes and stuff for that, you know, border firewall to get that up and working. And then, so that ruined my Saturday. And then Sunday morning, uh it went, the entire internet went down again. And I mean, come on, like when I say the entire internet, think about like the thousands of people who lose internet service. <laughs> oh um, yeah. So, I mean, I just had a pretty crummy weekend cause I had to deal with that then again on Sunday morning. And then on Sunday night, all I had been looking forward to was watching WrestleMania. And it's like, you know, WWE has two big events every year. WrestleMania and SummerSlam. Yeah, they have pay-per-views every other month throughout the year, but WrestleMania, SummerSlam are the big ones. And I sat down, I had bought a special dinner to have while watching WrestleMania. I had it spread out in front of me, put on my PS4, opened up the WWE app, and hit play on WrestleMania. And it said, uh, you need to log in. So I put in my email address. I put in my password. I know what my password is. I use a specific password for these types of things. And it said, uh, your password is wrong. And I said, no, it's not. So I put it in again and said, your password is wrong. So then I tried a different password, like thinking I may have used my alternate for that sign up, whatever. And it says, your password is wrong. So then I click the thing for, uh, you forgot your password. And it says, oh, we'll send you an email so you can reset your password. And I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Minutes are going by. WrestleMania is happening. I'm not watching it because I can't see it. And uh, I post on Twitter. I was like, you know, I'm really sad. I wish I was watching WrestleMania, but I can't get logged into the WWE app. And uh, Steve responds. He said, uh, didn't you see the email that they sent out earlier this week where... They had updated the app and a bunch of people were reporting that they couldn't log in after they updated the app and they wanted everybody to make sure that they logged in before WrestleMania because they couldn't guarantee that they'd be getting, able to get into WrestleMania. So oh, basically, no. the answer was no WrestleMania for Will oh. because there was no customer service, no password reset, and nothing. And it's like after this terrible, terrible weekend I had had, the one thing I wanted to make it better, I couldn't have. So that's why I am discontinuing my allegiance with the WWE. But uh, we can talk about uh, better things, more interesting things, um, like like Vanguard and recent changes and updates that have oh happened to this particular Lord, game. Oh, Lord, the changes. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, I have did not get a chance to play. Uh, that's not true. I got to play a little bit of Vanguard. Um, one of my coworkers uh, is wanting to learn Vanguard, and he's been investing in, um, I think Murakamu's Mur- Murakumo's, uh, the ninjas. Um, yeah. So I played a couple of games with him on Friday, but uh, there was no Vanguard League uh, in DC on Saturday, which is the typical day. Because there was a magic pre-release, and obviously magic pre-release means the entire store is overrun, and there's no room for Vanguard anymore. Um, but what did you guys get up to? I did absolutely nothing this week. That was fun. Uh, I probably shouldn't have gone first because I did nothing. I was supposed to. <laughs> I was supposed to go out to uh, 
uh, further away card store because it has like more sport and bigger tournaments. And then at the last minute, my friend was like, oh, I'm not going. And I wasn't about to like drive an hour to a store where I don't know anyone. So right. I just, yeah, no, I didn't go. And I didn't get to play this week, which is upsetting because I uh, just got in the last cards I needed for uh, a deck and I couldn't test it. And my weekend was almost as bad as Will's. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Did you get called into work? I, uh, no, I didn't. Did you get to see I the didn't. Batman Superman movie? I, oh, yeah, my weekend was as bad as yours. That movie <laughs> just makes me sad. <laughs> Um, that just makes me sad. But you did finish your uh, thing saver deck. Saver thing, yes. dra- dragon thing. And it gets and it gets even better with the rule update, which makes me super happy. All right. So before <laughs> we get into that, Cole, did you get to play any? Nope. What? I just Yeah, it was magic at my store as well. Oh, <laughs> podcast canceled. Yeah. No. But, uh... I think I think my my tweet um from earlier this week that I put out on Twitter, is there anything that magic cannot ruin? <laughs> it was yeah. quite accurate for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay because I'm really behind in my schoolwork, so I took the weekend and I caught up a little bit. <laughs> oh, not lame. all the way. Yeah, I'm pretty lame. That's okay. You need to uh, <clears throat> get your uh, art design whatever credibilities together so you can finish your TCG and then we can all spend money on that. Hooray. Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, so I did do some research and uh, found out my claim, at least one of my claims from last week, was incorrect. Although in my research, I found out that a lot of people have also misunderstood this rule. Um, you cannot retire a rear guard for no reason. There are only two reasons why you can retire a rear guard. One is if you are replacing it with a, another card in on that rear guard circle, uh, and the other is if it has ability that uh, causes it to be retired. But you cannot yeah, just was... pick up a card from the rear guard and pick it up and just retire it on your own. Because I was going to say, there's a lot of starters like Grand Blue, for instance. Their starter loves to be in the drop zone, and if they could just retire it on its own, that would be really broken. And I didn't think of that last week, so. Well, there's a lot of broken things about Vanguard, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's our, our where we are, destroyed by magic. But we, we did get some big <laughs> news uh, yesterday. I guess it just came out yesterday evening. Um, so that would be April 3rd. Uh, they announced um, the whole, not only did they announce the existence of the G Guardian cards officially, but they are changing formatting of the G Zone. Um, oh, yeah. So, uh, so the G Guardians we talked about a little before. It's a guard card, um, but the big thing for the change to the G Zone is it is now sixteen cards um, as opposed to eight. Uh, so oh. they've, they've doubled your G Zone, which um, I find kind of weird uh, because you can only have four G Guardians. Ever. So they're just giving you extra four an extra four strides for no reason. Was it? Which well, is there's got to be a reason. <laughs> they don't just do things for fun. There's nothing fun about Vanguard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can have all... more than you can have more than four uh, G Guardians in your G deck. You can only play four of them though. In ah, a game, yes, true, yeah, true, true, true. Because you go, yeah, yeah. But okay. no one's gonna do that. There's gonna have you're gonna have the aggro decks that are gonna play just sixteen strides that that do stuff and they're not going to play g guardians whatsoever yeah that sounds like a call for a rule change later in a few months um (laughs) so cole what how would you describe the look of the the g guardian cards so there's there's two that i've seen because there's one actually on the japanese site that is not the gear chronicle one but the one that's on the english site is the gear chronicle the japanese one is a cray elemental right i believe so yes yes it is it's like Light element, whatever, something. Yeah, so uh, uh, G Guardian is a grade four. Yeah, grade four. And it's uh, it's green, actually, instead of red. And it has a shield, which um, regular rank fours do not, or grade fours do not. So that's pretty cool. And the shield, uh, like it's all super special. And I think it's got like a diamond or something on it. Let me zoom in. 
<laughs> I've got a teeny <laughs> tiny. It's going to sparkle. And, and it actually has LEDs, so it gives off light when you <laughs> <laughs> flip it over. Oh, dude. If only. So, <clears throat> and this card, uh, the G Guardians don't actually have power like a normal uh, Vanguard card would have. They have text instead filling that slot that just says G Guardian in big, bright yellow caps, which is kind of cool because that's an entirely new, um, I guess, format for the cards because each of the other ones have a power slide or a power uh, increment there, and this does not. Yeah, these so are I the first cards that like have no no power number listed in that mm -hmm. area. They only have a shield, and the shield is always, or as of right now, it's always 1,500. Yeah. Oh, man. This, Wait, 1,500 uh, or 15,000? 15, 15,000. Everything's thousand, in the thousands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Cole's got Yu-Gi-Oh! on his mind. 1,500, oh. rank fours. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you're right. Oh. <laughs> See, I'm get, using get ranks on some other campaign. podcast, you Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> player. <laughs> oh, this is bad. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so Jack, how if okay? So, I believe I don't. I haven't seen anything explicit this about this, but I believe um, one thing that's going to be a little different is that you're going to have two decks in your G zone, one for your strides and one for your G guardians. That's from the kind of graphic. That's what I. It kind of looks like. Does that seem? I right believe. To you? No, I believe it's all no. just going to be the same. The same G zone because you just pick up your G zone and pick which one you want to use. It's not like you have to. Oh, I thought yeah. they had to be in a particular order. They no. did. They there were some rulings. Was that? I remember at first they did, but no one. I don't think anyone ever uses those. No, I don't think that. I think because I always see it as like because especially now you have so many cards in your G zone. You'll have like. Uh, you'll have a uh, utility like one. You'll play one of that you can utilize in like whatever situation for like depending on what deck you're playing. And if you had to like have it in a certain order, like especially with like sixteen cards, you wouldn't like. No, you can definitely just look through it and play which one you want. All right, okay. here's our wills. I must have been taught next wrong. Week. We're gonna have to. <laughs> hey, we're gonna have to look this one up and figure it out. Um, but how how do you play a G Guardian? You can't just flip it over and say on guard. <laughs> Uh, no, you're going to activate the G guardians by, uh, discarding a heal trigger from your hand in order to call a G guardian to the guardian circle. You and your opponent both have to be on grade three when you do this, but it does help. Like if you don't go second you kind of lose out on a lot of opportunity. You don't get the first attack. You don't get the first stride. Now G guardians kind of fix the problem where it's okay to go first because you get more powerful first strides. You get. Because the G Guardians, after you guard, you do put them in your G Zone face up. That you can activate your more powerful uh, Generation Break Two skills as your first stride, and you can use the more powerful strides before your opponent can. So it kind of balances out going first and second. All right. So just to, to make that a little clearer, right? You, um, because your opponent can attack stride first with a Grade Four you can then use a G Guardian first. Um, Correct. Which means that before you've actually done your first attack stride, you have a face-up uh, face card in your G zone. So exactly. That mm -hmm. gives you a little bit of acceleration on getting to Generation Break 2 um, just by using a G Guardian to guard when your opponent has attacked first. As long as you have a heal trigger. And the thing is... You only play four heal triggers while you play eight grade threes and you play four stride fodder. So you have like 12 cards you can discard for an uh, offensive stride while you only have four you can discard for a G Guardian. So it's like, it's a little more difficult to like pull off. But if you do, your deck speeds up a lot if you're playing a, a stride based deck. All right. And the way I usually play, I usually end up with my heal triggers in my hand anyways, because I draw them. Mm -hmm. Ugh, never get them as triggers. But now it's good to draw them. So it's okay. Yeah. Um, so I had one other question about the, um, G Guardian being in the G zone. It says explicitly that it is for generation break skills that it counts towards those. 
but do, do you think that also means that it counts towards uh, if it says you have to have two face-up cards in your G zone, right? these do count as G units, so they it would uh, apply to those skills as well. Okay, so even if it's not but, specifically a generation break, but it only says you have to have yeah. Okay, so like the alt uh, aerial divine knight alt mile, it's not a generation break. You get a certain effect, and then you get an additional effect if you have uh, two cards face up in your G zone. So it makes this Royal Paladin stride, which was already really good. Uh, it allows it to be the first stride you go into, which makes it even better. And I should probably pick up two more because that price is going to go up like pretty soon. Like oh, I'm sure. sure it already has. <laughs> oh, lovely. But we, we have to keep in mind though, with the, the G guardians, they don't actually contribute to uh, the G zone until they're put into the G zone. So when you play it, it goes straight to the guardian circle or the guard circle. And then that does not count towards the, uh, the G zone uh, count. Like unlike when you have an offensive stride on your Vanguard that counts towards uh, yeah. generation break skills. But the thing is with that, I think the only skill I can think of that that affects is Gurguit is Gurguit. And even then, like you can, you can still get around that by guarding like rear guard attacks and such. So what is Gurguit's? <laughs> we'll just all pronounce it differently. Gurguit. What is Gurguit's skill? Um, Sunrise Ray Knight Gurguit. Um, his ability is a very defensive ability. It's Generation Break Two, Counter Blast One, and Soul Blast One. At the beginning of the guard step of a battle that this unit is attacked, you can pay the cost. And if you do, you look at four cards from the top of your deck and call one of them into the guardian circle and then shuffle your deck. So you can add So it just guard. Yeah, so it allows for more additional cards without having to lose hand advantage, which is really cool. So that's the only skill I can think of. That's the only generation break skill I know of that activates on your opponent's turn, and that would be the only one that it affects. Yeah. Um does the generation guard or the G guardians uh are they can they only be used to guard your vanguard, or can they be used to guard a rear guard? I believe they can be used to guard uh, all units. Okay. Just like the old perfect guards could. Well, the, the, the simple perfect guards versus the complicated perfect guards. Yeah, yeah. So, Cole, do you have any other questions about the effects of the G-Guardians? They... Only block 15,000, so they're not perfect guards. So if somebody's attacking with a stride, you're going to have to still probably use a few other cards to guard with. But you won't have that yeah. heal trigger to guard with, so you've already lost 10,000. What is supposed to be good about these? Because you're, you're, you're discarding a card. First of all, it speeds up your generation break skills. Second of all, you're... You're using a 10k card, a 10k shield card. You're discarding it, and you're getting a 15k. And in a lot of cases, a lot of the the generate a lot of the G guardians we've seen in the anime so far add an additional 5,000 power. So you're you're spending 10,000 to get 20,000. So you're getting an extra 10k shield. Okay. For yeah, oh, I didn't know that. This other question has come up of the Cray Elemental. Uh, is what is his full name? Is it like Snow Dragon Blizza? Oh, Snow Element Blizza. There you go. <laughs> so that oh, dude, yeah. um, his ability is basically he's he's a he's a grade four. He's a stride, an attack stride. I guess we'll call it now. And for every face up card in the G zone, it's plus five thousand to his attack. So if you do manage to stride 15 times in a game, then he, <laughs> he becomes 106, I believe it is, 106,000. You don't even have to stride that many. You just have to have that many face up. But that's what everyone's hyping up is the fact. Yes, but still going through uh, 15 card G zone is like, how many strides do you go through now in an average game? And the game is speeding up even more. Well, uh, about three. If I do yeah. two Nebula Dragon, Big Crunch Dragons, that's four cards up in my G zone. And then if I do two Excelix Messiahs, that's like five more cards. I'm already up to nine. <laughs> Wait, what? Will, will that ever so happen? You... 
I don't. Think yeah, so. Not often. No. Yeah. Not often. Yeah, because the game has to last that long in order for you to get that many uh, strikes. And the game off. is, and in addition to this, the game is speeding up even more. So you'll probably go into even less strikes. I think the reason that the 16 card G zone has, uh, well, there's ups and downs to it, just like there is with everything when they add a mechanic to the to a card game. It allows for more utility. Like a lot of the time, people are complaining that we don't have a side deck in Vanguard. Now you don't need one. You have your G zone with all these extra cards that you can use in any situation for any matchup. And you have like Cray Elementals that were good. They weren't good enough to be in an eight card G zone. They're now good enough to be put in a 16 card G zone. And I think that's what's really cool about this. Next month, we're getting Fighters Collection 2016, I believe. That's May, May 20th, correct. There you go. May 20th. And is that going to have a G Guardian for every single clan? Yes. Yep. So unlike how they, when they introduced uh, offensive strides, they just gave them to like the the however many clans were supported in GBTO1, they're giving us the Fighters Collection first, and then so everything has a G Guardian, and then we'll get more G guardians probably in the sets to come. So by GBT01, yeah. you mean generation stride. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, each of the, uh, the G, uh, guardians are all going to be double rares. So they should be easier to get. No, that's yeah. Instead of the triple rares and GRs. Yeah. So how many cases of, uh, fighters collection are we buying? <laughs> I've got one already. One's already pre-ordered. Are you serious? <laughs> you pre-ordered a case without asking us? Oh, oh, case. No, sorry. Little, little tiny little box I have. No. Okay. Box ain't gonna do it, buddy. <laughs> oh, I know. Not with the number of clans we're running. <laughs> <laughs> so, are do you see any clans that are gonna do better or worse with uh, this whole accelerated G zone action? Um, the the three clans, the two clans. Okay, the three clans I've heard a lot about, Royal Paladins, Shadow Paladins, and Link Jokers. Link Jokers? I haven't, yes. I haven't, specifically the Chaos Breaker variant, which I, is what I've heard. I haven't, I don't know a lot about the clan. I probably should, because it's one of the best decks, I think, right now, Chaos Breaker is. But I've heard that that's getting a, a big boost. Shadow Paladins are definitely getting a big boost with the where you can play like multiple aura geysers and all of that you get like a bunch of other cards you uh can play a full play set of aura geysers and then you play whatever else you want to play so you uh what's an aura geyser it's a the best stride shadow paladins have it's it gets you it nets you a whole bunch of hand advantage is basically what it does it's like plus six when you stride this card plus six how how is uh how is or or guys are spelled. I couldn't even find that card if I was looking for it. Counter blast one, soul blast one. Choose a card persona flip. Choose two of your rear guards and retire them. When this unit attacks a vanguard, you may pay the cost if you do. Reveal two cards from the top of your deck, and this unit gets plus five thousand for each grade one or less revealed. So you get to draw two, then you drive check three times. Nice. And but yeah. how, how you spell the name of the card? Uh a U R A G E Y S E R. Oh, so it could be Aura Gazer. Hmm. Uh, agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but it's not like O R O G E I Z E. No, it's it's like Aurora. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you also get so with a lot of Shadow Paladin builds, they were only able to run two Aura Geyser, and you don't get to utilize the finisher that uh is supremacy black dragon aura geyser doomed which you use his effect by having three other aura geysers three of the uh regular aura geysers face up in your g zone so now shadow paladins are able to run the four three aura geyser and one doomed they're able to run that play set they're able to run uh multiple restanders in the diablo they just get a lot of utility that they didn't the deck the that a lot of the builds didn't have before with Royals more of the, uh, the thing that the way they get the boost with this rule change is the G guardian because Royals have a lot of the best strides and a lot of them like alt mile is a, uh, you have to have two cards face up in your G zone. Now you can use him as your first stride and you get to call a grade two and give everything plus 2000 power in your front row. And you get a guaranteed call 
of a grade two. Before your first stride was Gablade, where you have to hit to get a grade two, and you don't get the power boost. So now you get Alt Mile, which flips up uh, a card in your G. It's a Persona flip, and then if you have two cards and you do that whole effect, so that becomes a really good first stride. And you just get a lot of good power plays with that deck, and you have a lot of utility because Royal Paladins so having a main character in the anime that plays the deck of course they they're one of the clans with the most support and they yeah, get to yeah. utilize a lot of that support you get all that support all right <laughs> anything else we need to say about the gen G- G- i keep wanting to call them generation guardians but they're just g guardians i think that's it yeah I, well i'm sure we'll be talking more about them as time goes on oh another oh, yeah. another thing just one more thing i wanted to mention well i did mention a lot of the upsides to the g zone there are downsides as well um, a lot of the clans that were unsupported and like they already struggle to fill their g zone they're gonna st- have an even harder time filling their uh g zone now <coughs> gold paladins <coughs> but um <laughs> so those the like i think we were moving towards bushy road was moving towards like a path where a lot of the clans were all equally supported and they have supported all the clans pretty well within the last uh since the the start of g of the g sets and now they're kind of just like i think going in the opposite direction of where they should be going that's just my opinion but we are getting we are getting a set dedicated or not entirely dedicated but featuring gold paladins as well as a starter deck or trial deck stuff that trial in your part. g zone Hopefully. <laughs> oh man, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, gold paladins need to retire because the link jokers aren't invading anymore, so nobody needs them. <laughs> they can go. Yeah, they're helping now. They're not invading. Yeah, they're good. They're the messiahs. <laughs> All right. So, Cole, did you have anything else to say about the uh, G Guardians? Uh, I'm glad that every clan's getting one in yes. Spider's collection. Yeah. That's a really nice touch. Uh, other than that, I can't wait to see what more of the art looks like. Because I'm a big fan of the Vanguard art. Oh, oh the art is beautiful on and these cards. The, just the cool. way they're designed is really cool. Yeah, yeah, I really like the layout. <laughs> All right. Well, our term of the week is Guard Circle, the seventh circle on the uh, field uh, of Vanguard, um, with the first six being the Vanguard Circle and the five Rear Guard Circles. Uh, so the guard circle is where the G Guardian does its best work. <laughs> <laughs> How <laughs> ironic! <laughs> yeah, it's well in the G well, zone. It has okay. it does a lot that's of work. True. So yeah, that's, that's true, true. and it, it could it could have an effect while it's placed up in the G zone. That's yeah, true too. I think it's in the guard circle is where it does its best work. But it there does. are a number of cards that can be used um, to guard. Uh, they are the ones you look for the shield in the upper left hand side of the card. Uh, zeros, ones, and twos are able to shield. Threes and fours typically do not have shields, although now the G Guardians do have shields. The guard, guard circle is where you would place those cards. It's between the two vanguards if everything you and your opponent are lined up. It's the center between the two vanguards. And um, if you have a rear guard that's being attacked and you want to guard against that attack, you just, you know, usually you just display. The cards that you're using to shield because there's no extra damage damage calculation if you know if you if you have enough to shield with um you just show it to your opponent they accept that their attack did not go through and you put those two cards into the drop zone um if you are if your vanguard is being attacked by another vanguard you typically put your uh, the cards that you're using to guard on the in into the a guard circle in front of your vanguard just so it stays as a record of the amount of power you're putting to shield um, especially if you are not putting forward enough to block if your vanguard has any triggers yeah you're gonna have to have a lot of shields to block that hundred and eight thousand power blizzard <laughs> <laughs> one perfect guard my friend perfect guard. yeah we probably should mention perfect guards too how they have zero shield but uh well, the old printings of Perfect Guards had zero shield in the corner, in their the left side of the card, and now they've kind of fixed that and put the Sentinel, like the gold bar on the side instead. But they do, uh, if you put these in the 
in the G in the Guardian Circle, you discard a card and the attack is nullified no matter what. So it's called like a some people call them zero shields, perfect guards, null shields. Uh, complete guard is uh, complete uh, guards. Uh, That's used. true too. And the old uh, perfect perfect guard, I think, is the most common term used. Yes, in the US. it definitely is. Um, the old perfect guards could be used to guard any uh, a rear guard or your vanguard, um, but the newer ones that have additional abilities on them uh, can only be used to guard the um, vanguard itself, and they cannot be used to guard a, a rear guard. Um, yeah. But what you want to do is, even if you are guarding a rear guard and not placing your cards in the guard circle, you want to look out for effects that are triggered if a card is placed in the in the guard circle any time you are using it to guard, whether a rear guard or a vanguard, unless it specifically says when this card guards a vanguard, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But just be on the look. Um, I believe they do have a graphic similar to the rear circle and vanguard circle graphic on the cards to represent the guard circle uh, unless i'm completely crazy it's like a, a gold g with a black triangle behind it so i believe sure. that's yeah i believe that yep, is. that's exactly it I'm, so i'm not completely crazy just partially oh. <laughs> and we should we should also mention that there's another kind of shield i don't know the correct term but um people around me call it the quintuple shield oh quintet wall is yeah, the proper wall. term yeah 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 that uh the, you, you take the top five cards of your deck and you put them in the g zone and then you add up those shields so it's not a perfect card but it could potentially potentially um be a pretty big shield it can and, also potentially get you a perfect guard if there is a perfect guard in the top five true and you can pay the cost for your perfect card yes okay cool um, you, can. you could also pull uh, five grade threes and get no. Shield. You could, and then you're screwed, and you wasted a counter blast. <laughs> yeah. and that's block. generally these quintet walls aren't run as often as perfect guards. They tried something in the legion format, and in the legion format, they were run because it, it fills your drop zone, and then you can mm -hmm. shuffle back what you want for legion. Uh, right, as of right now, I don't think there've been any printed since before the the G sets began. Generation Stride. Yeah. Well, it it seems to me like Legion is is fading from from the game. Not my thing, Saver. <laughs> Not my bluish flame. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I have no Legions yet. Yet. I like I like the whole mechanic of Legion a lot. Just saying. I well, like how the art continues. And... We'll we'll get there eventually. We know you like <laughs> the arts. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like the arts. All right. So, um, anything else about the guard circle that we need to be aware of? It, it's yeah. Uh, I was gonna say for the first time I played, um, actually until like a month or two ago, I didn't realize that you could actually throw grade twos in there to guard. I thought grade twos could only intercept. Oh so no! Yeah, you can I was, play them from your hand too. Yeah, I didn't know that. I was only using zeros and ones, so that was a thing. Yeah, that really helped me. <laughs> there's only one guard circle between you and your opponent because you know only one side is attacking, only the one side is being attacked at a time. So yeah, no need for more than one uh, guard circle. And yes, the grade two, um, I don't. It's not called an ability, but the the standard uh, function. Of, what is it? Do you know yeah, what it's called? I did. I can't remember right now. Because zeros and ones, it's boost. Threes, it's duh, just double drive twin drive twin, twin drive. drive and uh fours it's triple drive and with grade twos it's intercept and that means yes. that if you have a grade two on a rear guard circle and you want to use it as a shield it can jump into the guard circle and act as add to the shield and there are actually some grade twos that will increase their guarding power if they are uh used as an intercept versus a from the hand shield yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I think that covers everything that we need to cover this week. Um, thanks to SBJ for continuing to help us in getting going and getting uh, up into iTunes. Um, we should have a website soon and, uh, and some other stuff for keeping track of the podcast. And um, I believe uh, we'll also 
going to have a YouTube channel for any time we need to, you know, actually show a video of a card game, if you'd actually believe it. Um, <laughs> getting that in, in line. Uh, thanks to Nick Burgess for the music that we use uh, as our opening and closing. And uh, if you need to reach out to me right now, I'm available on Twitter at Wash in the Sink. And Cole, you're at? Uh, Cole McCune, that's spelled C-O-L-E underscore M-C-C-U-N-E. And I am at uh, Drive underscore Jack. Thank you guys for listening to this week's episode of the Magic the Gathering pod, uh, I mean Drive Check podcast. And that's it. <laughs>